I'm glad Alpha didn't haze me. <laughs> I'm just saying, now you know, I'm not with that. I would have been like, nope, sorry. Be behind because dressing it was done a to them. Way for an interview. For example, I've worked both in the advertising industry and in the corporate space. Mm. In the advertising industry, I could show up with jeans and a t-shirt and still get the job. Okay. As a creative, you could show up like that as long but as I you're was free to Welcome back to the sandbar with your friendly neighborhood MC Sandy Paulino. And um, you might recognize a familiar face joining us today, uh, Jennifer Paulino. And we also have with us our good friend, Kayla Quesada. How are you doing, Kayla? Good. How are you? Good, good, good. So Kayla's joining us for our conversation about community. It's been a topic that we've wanted to hit for a little bit. And um, we thought it'd be a good opportunity to get that started. So, um, Kayla, you told me you work at a hospital, right? Yes. What is that? What's what's going on there? So I am an office coordinator. That's my title. Mm. I, you can think of it as like receptionist work. Okay. I'm mostly like over the phone. I do mm. like orders and stuff, and it's particularly concentrated on cancer patients. So okay. that's been my thing for the past like year, um. year and a half. And you was you were there during like the pandemic and stuff. Yeah. How was was that? Was it popping off in there? It was definitely intense. Um, I don't see patients in person, but I'm my job needed me to be on site, so uh. having to go remote was a lot for everyone, mm -hmm. and it was just kind of overwhelming. But yeah, we had okay. to figure it out. So Kayla's also an alumna of Omega Phi Beta, and I'm not really into fraternities or sororities or any of that so you you're gonna have to you know break it down and for somebody that doesn't know yeah so yeah so what's that what's what what do y'all how do y'all operate so we are a greek lettered organization mm. and the philanthropy is raising awareness of violence against women mm. um, shout out to y'all because we all know in this world it's very necessary yeah yeah so we focus on women empowerment and um, one of the things that we do focus on is domestic violence and community and women, em like I said, women empowerment and just having that community within each other because sometimes it's really hard to find that outside. Mm -hmm. And I was lucky enough to find that community in my school and, and translate it outside after I graduated too. Okay. So I thought that was really dope for me. Yeah. All right. And uh, Jennifer, you're actually in a similar situation. I wouldn't say so. It's not really a Greek letter organization, but it's definitely that community type of situation where you have people coming together to fulfill a purpose and to create a safe space for people and to create opportunities, which is alpha, right? I'm I'm a little I'm I'm a little new, but I know I know my my alpha knowledge. So Jennifer, tell tell us, tell the people, what do you do? You know, what is alpha to you? So I started with Alpha um, back in 2013. Um, uh, I was, yeah, 2013, 2014, around there. Um, just simply by uh, getting involved with somebody who was part of the organization. I was an intern for them, actually. Um, and then later on, ended up going to events with them. And simply, I was attracted to the organization just because of the community that they offered for Latino professionals. It's very rare for me to see Latinos in positions of power and positions of impact within the corporate space. So to see Latinos come together for something as simple as a happy hour or an event, um, was really empowering for me and it really gave me reassurance that the further that I went in my career the more impact I could make mm -hmm. um, and so with that being said yeah. I ended up being part of the professional chapter of New Jersey in 2019 no actually 2020 um, so I interviewed for the role in 2019, got the role in 2020 as a VP of student affairs, um, because one of my biggest strengths, um, and one of the things that I'm super passionate about is mentoring. Um, so I ended up from there getting a role on the national team as my full-time job. So I serve the Latinx community by way of my full-time job and a volunteer role within alpha, um, both on the national level and the okay. local level. So on the national level, what is because VP of Student Affairs is pretty specific for the professional chapter. What do you do on the national level specifically? 
So on the national level, I'm the director of business development and partnerships. So okay. overall, I'm responsible for ensuring that we are creating partnerships with corporations and organizations that are willing to help us further our mission of impacting the Latinx community and those that uh, are allies to the community itself. Okay. So that right there, I feel like that's where I come in. You know, if there was anything that I could kind of offer to this conversation is that student perspective because what um what alpha does specifically you know i'm a part of st- different organizations like uh the bearcats sports business club they really help uh students get into that uh the sports side of business which is pretty obvious from the title but again it's that sp- that specific group of people that are working with these students to get them into this industry. It's not just a club where you come and network with a bunch of random people. Like it's not a career fair for a bunch of different organizations and um, organizations. Yes, but not industries and alpha. I joined back in the spring of 2020. My sister's actually the one that, that told me about it. And I was, I was kind of skeptical, but I was going to a new school Going to a new area was kind of an opportunity for me to join something that I I thought would help me kind of integrate into the community. And Alpha was, was probably the best decision of my life, honestly. Uh, yeah. They like the the first experience I had with them was we went to a general interest meeting, and the the e board or the the leadership of the club at my school chapter. E board stands for Executive Board of Directors. Exactly. So they came into the general interest meeting and they were like, hey, how y'all doing? This is Alpha. If you don't know about Alpha, and then they went through the whole convention stuff and how they got internships. Some of them got full time roles into these big companies like Microsoft, Google, Facebook, oh, wow. you know, like their their real life. We're testimonials. pretty awesome. Yeah, Jeez, it was pretty you know, cool. You didn't so know. I said, I'm in the club where. I could get a job out of high school that most people wouldn't get out of a master's, you know? Yeah. Like, people wouldn't know how to get into these kind of spaces on their own. And I, first meeting, off the bat, I was really interested in joining. So I joined, and the pandemic hit. (laughs) So it was was kind of weird. COVID, just wrecking everything. Yeah, it was kind of weird how um, we... I joined the club and then over the the summer towards the end of the spring there was an opportunity for an internship with uh, it, it was a partnership between multiple alpha chapters mostly alpha charlotte though and bank of america and you know of course I saw bank of america and I was like if I can oh, get yeah. into this you know I I'm not I don't want to really get into banking that that much but I also didn't know what it was so I joined the internship and bank is actually mad interesting. Like there's so much <laughs> like banking is really That's interesting. interesting. I would there's, never think. Myself. Yeah, there's so much <laughs> that there's so much that goes into the system of banking. There's consulting, there's financial advisory, like wealth management, that kind of thing. But then there's the risk management side. There's also the technical operations, the strategy. And then obviously the the like face banking part of it. But, I think yeah. one of the biggest strengths about community to your point um specifically alpha community or even um when you think about fraternal organizations is the exposure that you get Mm -hmm. to people that are in spaces that you normally wouldn't have access to Mm -hmm. um and learning about these things like all of the different variations of roles that you can get in an industry that you thought was just for you know finance people or accounting people or in an industry or a group that you thought was just for women of a specific background in the case of opb there's there's so many things that go into understanding the nuances behind a community so i think just overall understanding how you can benefit from being a part of one of these organizations is the key to succeeding because for you you talked a little bit about it and it was you saw people in spaces that you knew other people couldn't even break into with having high, what we consider qualifications. And privilege too. That speaks to privilege because these organizations are allowing for students without any types of qualifications, no type of family history to come in and just get their shot. Of course, not everyone is going to be able to take advantage, but there's an opportunity at least for everybody to get a shot. You, You get um people from all over the place all you have to do is be a student at the school and at the professional level all you have to do is be a professional like you just have to have a profession in something and it's also helping 
they they were they started off mostly focused with Latinos, right? And now they're kind of opening up. Uh, they're opening up to just students in general because they're they're an organization. As far as I know, they're the only ones really doing what they're doing at that scale. Because with Alpha, you know, there's clubs like uh, NABA, and um, I, that stands for National Association uh, of Black, Black Accountants. Accountants. Yeah, yeah. And there's also uh, FBLA, Future Business Leaders of America. And there's a couple organizations like that. So to that point, I think there's, sorry to stop you there, but I think there's something really important that I'd love Kayla to talk a little bit about. And as somebody that's part of a fraternal organization, I I know quite a few and I know quite a few people in them. Um, But I'd love for Kayla to talk a little bit about that idea of working hard for something Mm. and how that translates to being part of a community um such as the one that she's a part of um with omega phi beta and what that means in the end because i feel like for our students that are part of like the alpha community the harder you work so being a student leader being in front of these um organizations or corporations as a community leader Mm. is such an impactful piece but i think just that idea of working hard and being a Latino and working for your spot translates to something bigger than that. So I'd love to, for Kayla to kind of touch on that, what it means to work hard and what you get out of working hard. I think if you're able to, it's kind of difficult. Like, I agree. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm biased as well. I'm a Latina. Yeah. Um, I feel like Our community is very hardworking, but just because you can have that idea of the community doesn't mean that others outside of it are going to give you the opportunity because you have that mentality in mind. Like, oh, I know that we're all hardworking, so we deserve this position. We deserve this title. We deserve this role, this salary. Um, So I feel like there's just so much more you have to prove. And Mm -hmm. I feel like with our organizations, I really appreciate the platform that they give us to have access to the opportunity. Um, Because I I honestly, like sometimes, you know, I've been lost. I don't know what I want to do with my life or like what career I want to have. But I have access to so many different women. and, And outside of my organization, I have access to other people from other organizations and they can give me insight and that pathway or like guidance into mm-hmm. like, you know what? I, I have faith in you. And I feel like that's what this community allows us to, or gives to us. I should say that faith, like you're going to do great. I know you're going to do great. So I'm going to give you that. Yeah. Um, so I just, it's, it's definitely like you, you're walking on um, a tight rope kind of, with like I want to like prove that I'm really great, but like not overdo it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So it's always been a struggle, and I feel like, at least knowing that there's people who have done the same thing as you, it makes it that much better to like I'm gonna keep going, like I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna fight for it, I'm gonna get that. So would you say that part of your success is attributed to the mentors that you had in these communities? Definitely. Mm. Um, I didn't know it at the time. So in high school, like I, my English teacher, I, we went, we were like butting heads all the time. Like we were just not always there, like as friends, but as a, like a person, like I looked up to him as a professor, like as a teacher. And in the end, like I learned so many lessons out of him and he taught me like, you know, you need to show your worth. And he gave me access to things that I didn't know that I could as a high schooler. And so having that exposure at that age, I was like, oh, like there's people that can give me that yeah. leeway into a life that I didn't know existed because mm-hmm. you live in a box sometimes. And then being in college and going away to college, I went to SUNY Plattsburgh. If nobody knows, that's all the way up north. That's about 45 minutes to an hour from Canada. <laughs> so <laughs> she's, what she's saying is she's basically in Canada. Yeah, basically. Break. <laughs> and so like being out there and there's not a lot of minorities and you know. Which I got Buffalo. Yeah, no, it's just crazy. Like you, there's only a handful of Latinos or there's only a handful mm. of African yeah. Americans or Asian Americans. And so you're just, you feel like another box you're put into another box. Yeah. Um, 
So when I found these organizations on campus, I was like, wow, like there's someone there's or a there's a group. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, there's a place for you. I can fit here. And then yeah. when they give you the opportunities to succeed outside of just being on campus in school, it's like, Whoa. oh, why, why <laughs> wouldn't I take that opportunity? Yeah, yeah. And I, I think that's a, that, that sheds light on kind of the representation of fraternity and sororities that don't happen in media. Because right when you yeah. when you think of a frat when you're in high school or a sorority you think of parties and you think of you know sports games and of course there's a couple every now and then where you see people in in suits or you see women in power uh, in real life you see them giving like paying homage to their organizations but for the most part what we're shown is that they're just a group where people can come together and party you know they're a group where people can this is the organization that you have to get into in order to to get somewhere else it's not that community feeling of hey we're here because we're all trying to reach the same goal and we're all trying to uplift each other and i think an important part of that community sense is that people we reward people that work hard and not not even like in the real world they say work hard and because in real in real life working hard isn't all you have to do like you have to know people you mm-hmm. have to have the skills. You have to be be there at the right time. You could have the qualifications. You could have the connections. But if they don't have an open position, you're not you're not getting anywhere. You know, like they can't give you a position that's not available. So this organization in the college space doesn't require a position to be open. So you can have the qualifications and then you make the connections while you're there. You know, so when you get into the real world, now if there's somewhere you want to go, You have the connections that will tell you, hey, this isn't available here, but I know somebody over here. And that wouldn't be available if you didn't get connected with them in the first place. Right. But I would say to your point of creating to being plugged into available positions, organizations that are designed to build community also create positions for you within their community that help elevate you. So, for example, let's take Alpha as an example. Alpha may not be able to plug you into a job that's not open, but Alpha allows you the opportunity to be part of local chapters or your student chapters They'll that plug then you give you that job. leadership role mm. where you can gain the skills and the knowledge that you would gain from another job. Same thing with organizations such as um, OPB. They give you the opportunity to be president or vice president of a mm. chapter, um, treasurer or anything else that you're interested in that helps you expand on your abilities, yeah. your experience, and your yeah. knowledge that then qualifies you more than somebody who's just sitting at home waiting for that door to open. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's um that's I feel like that's what the lift program was, that internship that I was talking about. Because it really um it was really I that was my first internship ever. You know, I've only had two so far. But um I feel like from what I've heard about internships that that first internship was probably one of the best ways to operate an internship because we were sponsored by Bank of America, but we weren't working for Bank of America, you know? Because mm-hmm. when you're in an internship, you're kind of working for that organization low-key. When we were here, of course, they're getting um, they're getting a look into the next generation of graduates, and they're going to get their new hires and stuff, and they're going to kind of teach us. Their they're, yeah, they're going to teach us the skills that they want us to have when we get there. But for the most part, they were their sole purpose of this internship was to give us skills that we need to get into the professional world. You know, I learned about Tableau, emotional intelligence, uh, leadership, being on a team, just things that kind of were you could apply anywhere. It wasn't just banking. It wasn't just things that Bank of America needed. It was also alpha inputting what they thought their students would need to succeed in the future in any space. So that uh, I think it was like eight week or uh, eight week internship was just a bunch of workshops and skills, training, networking. And I think they, hopefully they're able to do it again. But that experience that I had made me so much more confident of getting into that real world. Because I had no idea that, I had no idea that professionals were so human. (laughs) You (laughs) think they're robots. Yeah, yeah. As a a college student, even if you know adults, you don't know them professionally. Now you're meeting professionals and talking to them on a daily basis. And you're like, wow, like, I can do that. I can get there. They can they can help me. I can help them. And that's the other thing. Like the mentors that we got were getting value from us. They were learning from us and that was, you know, just double the reward. 
Yeah, I think there's a shift that happens in your mind when you see professionals in a light that is different from what you're used to in media or what you're taught in school. I think for me, that shift happened at a happy hour. I remember being at a happy hour fresh out of college. Um, It was probably like the first professional happy hour that I had ever been to. And I was there with the sole purpose of gaining like leads for my sales job. But it ended up being a very eye-opening experience because I had this random guy come up to me and start hitting on me. And it was so (laughs) foreign to me because for me, professional settings were settings where people just talked business. Right. Communities where people just built their just business revenue streams yeah, yeah. right profits and sales yeah. and yeah. numbers like yeah. th- there was no natural human experience yeah. that happened no, hey how was your day mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> it was like very surface level and yeah. then that happened and i was like oh wait what this this, this is, is happening right now <laughs> like, yeah is this, yeah, this yeah. Is okay <laughs> yeah right and i was very <laughs> confused and the older that i got and the more events that i went to And even hearing people's experiences at, like, the Alpha National Convention and how they found their, like, um, life partner at Mm. a professional convention. Yeah, I've heard that so much. Right. It's Mm. mind-blowing to people that don't know. It's like Loki a hookup spot. Wow. (laughs) Is it really? I've heard that. I I make jokes about the Alpha Love Connection because I feel like people really do go to, like, the national convention and meet. Think about it. When it comes to that, you 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 are you already know that your values somewhat align, right? Like I'm 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 gonna try to break this down and see if I can understand this. So you already know that uh, professionally and maybe even background wise, your values align. You might be Latino, you might be a minority. There, of course, we have Caucasian people in the organization, but for the most part, the foundation is minority impact. And you might be coming from maybe a middle class family sometimes. So, and you're like looking to climb the ladder. So you already have that connection. You don't even have to talk about that. You get in there and you're like, oh, this person has a nice vibe. Wow. They're, oh, they're in this industry. I'm kind of interested in that industry. And then you start having conversations and you already have like, I guess when you're dating, you already checked off, let's say the first three boxes, just as an example. So it speeds up that process and you can get right into knowing that person for who they are and where they want to go. It's almost like if you created, like, uh, okay, like, there's a dating app called The League, right? Mm. And The League is literally dedicated to just professionals. And it's literally, like, they check your LinkedIn and everything before you're accepted into The League community to date. (laughs) Kayla's like, well, I gotta gotta check this one out. Yeah, (laughs) like, to date. Like, they actually, like, ask you for your LinkedIn information because the whole idea behind it is that you're meeting like-minded individuals mm. who are focused on their career, yeah. but also interested in love. So it's that same kind of idea where once you've walked into like a convention for an organization such as yeah. Alpha, you've you've already checked certain boxes, whether it be romantically or friendship-wise. Yeah, there's certain boxes that you've checked or like pre-filters that they've gone through meeting them in this space that you're like, all right, I don't have to ask these questions because it can be assumed yeah. that you're an ambitious, career, goal-driven individual. Yeah, so that's it. That's not even how ha- that doesn't have to mm-hmm. be mentioned. Right. Yeah, and as the thing I would say the difference between that and the the Greek lettered organizations is that a lot of time the Greeks are separated by by gender, by sex, whatever. Like it's usually a bunch of dudes yes. or a bunch of girls. And that isn't necessarily a bad thing because you do need that space to be with within your own masculinity, femininity, whatever you want to call it. But I also think that there's a lot of value in having those communities where it's mixed for a specific purpose. Because, I mean, that's part of community, you know, romance, the, the relationships that you get out of it. Not necessarily romantic, but mm-hmm. that's that's in there. You know, that's a part of the subset of. I guess the if you if you want to build a community, that's going to that's going to be a good thing that comes out of it are those relationships. But to your point, Kayla just brought something um, up about co-ed fraternities. Yeah, I I didn't I didn't know that. Yeah, there are some co-ed. There was actually um, a co-ed organization that was brought to my campus when I was there. Mm. Um, And it was definitely different because I'm used to the only male or only female 
um, organization. So I was like, what's that? Like, how is that going <laughs> to work? <laughs> right. That's saucy. Um, and it's funny because yeah. they actually, you know, they benefited from each other. Um, I didn't get to experience that. But at the same token, I didn't feel like that was my route. That was my yeah. path. Like, I felt like I needed to be with an off. You needed with, that estrogen. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I needed to, like, yeah. be with women who were like-minded, who were, as you said, goal-driven and career-oriented. And, like, they, we all had this, like, end goal. Like, it wasn't just. And the women that I've come across, it wasn't like, I'm just going to join this Greek organization. I'm going to do the stigmas of like, or the stereotypes of drinking and doing like and partying, partying yeah, and yeah. any of those crazy things. Like this was a real thing. Mm. Um, and I wanted to be part of something that was real. And they gave me that opportunity to be real and like, ha like reach for those things and give me the opportunities to learn. Like it's crazy with joining the organization something as simple as writing an email yeah you don't think that that's a big thing yeah <laughs> and let me tell you writing emails is a big thing like that's there's proper mm -hmm. email etiquette and yeah. some people how don't many people can't yeah. yeah and you don't even think that that's a thing until like i graduated and i got into my jobs mm -hmm. and it was like the it was wild. Like, yeah. I couldn't believe that me fresh out of college could write a better email than someone who was in their 30s. Uh, yeah. 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 I mean, I, that that experience, I also, I was pretty privileged with the high school that I went to, and we got a really good education. Like, I I would also say that I was, you know, I, I enjoyed say school. really great education because I think Central prepared us and allowed us the opportunity to prepare ourselves mm -hmm. for things that even great even good schools didn't have. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like dual sure. enrollment, a lot of good schools have, but the, your ability to select, you can your, pick like three schools. There's like three or four schools around the area that you can do dual enrollment. Well, at least when I was in high school, right. that I knew of. But as central, you had the ability to pick your career track in high school. Wow. Yeah. Like you could pick your high school courses like, we're talking basic, like, general education courses based on the mm -hmm. career that you wanted to take. So, like, if you wanted to be more STEM-focused, you would take more math sciences. Um, if you wanted to be more creative-focused, you would take more art. But, like, yeah. they prepared you from the moment you um, walked yeah. into the high school. That's a really yeah. great opportunity. Yeah. But and when, you, I was, when I was in school, they had um, the Apollo program where you could literally build your high school path through the use of project-based learning. So if you wanted to go the music route, you would be in a bunch of music type classes. Of course, you still had to take the generals, but you would do a project on you would make a song for a project or you would if you were in art, you would do a portrait or if you were into photography, you would do a collage. Like they just had so many different ways that you could mold. You can construct your own way to learn, basically. For for a high school, at least that was that was That's mind blowing. A big thing. It was it came it was mostly popular in my junior and senior year, so I didn't really get into it. And I'm also not I'm not I wouldn't say I'm really um, an arts type of person because that was at least when I was there it seemed more like an arty thing. But um, the fact that Central was able to cater to so many different students and me specifically, I would say that I got the writing out of it. Of course, I got all this everything, but what what I really was surprised with was the the lack of writing education that there is in just in older older communities i guess or in less less privileged education systems because in middle school i shout out to miss wimsett because she like she made me fall in love with language arts like writing i would go so hard you know, and of course, you know, she was kind of cute. So I was, I was trying a little harder, <laughs> but um, wow. it, it, it was um, the, the skills that she gave us were ridiculous. She made us do, um, I think they were called weighty words or something, or it was something words, you know, like a vocabulary thing. And every person got a word to study what it meant and to create a story out of that, out of that word. You had to use the word correctly and you had to present it to the class. And we I, I i remember i forget how frequently it was but i got a word xenophobia xenophobia i'm in eighth grade and i'm out here researching xenophobia <laughs> you know and that's interesting that you as a dominican male mm -hmm. got the word xenophobia like there's so much that you can unpack there yeah <laughs> like, well i mean i didn't get the word you got to choose your letter 
but you the uh i don't know i don't remember how it was structured but i think you chose a letter and then there was like a word that you wouldn't find out what it was until you chose your letter okay but still the fact that you yeah I got as xenophobia. a dominican yeah. black male mm-hmm. got xenophobia like there was if you were as aware of your dominican heritage back then as you are now There would have been so much to unpack there. Yeah, it would have been a whole different story. But, yeah, and so from that point on, when I've always kind of been the vocabulary type of kid. I loved words. But after that experience, I would not write a paper without a thesaurus. I, every time I wanted to use a word, if I went to, got to the next sentence or next couple sentences and that same word came up, I would go into the source mm-hmm. and be like, nah, different word. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. or, that's a dub. I'm never using that for the rest of the paper, you know? Yeah. And I went a little hard, so it seemed a little extra. But that helped me grow my vocabulary. And when I got to late high school, early college, this is what really surprised me because I took dual enrollment. When I was taking classes with 20-some, 30-some-year-olds and their papers at least grammar, grammar wise, vocabulary wise was like mine. I, mine was better. You know, I'm just going to say it. my vocabulary and my grammar was at a higher level in, as a junior and senior in high school. I was like, whoa, like this is real mm-hmm. life school. Like I'm learning because, you know, when you're in high school, you're like, yeah. ah, this is this is all BS, right. whatever. But I'm really I'm really seeing the results of what my teachers were. My my teachers were really teaching me things that I was going to use in real life. And I also think, obviously, kudos to the teachers in the central system because they go hard for their students. There are some teachers that kind of just give you whatever. They give you the curriculum. But you also have to understand that teachers really are passionate about teaching their students. They're not just there for a paycheck all the time. They're not just there because they want to. That's the only job they got. You know, it's it's hard being a teacher. I feel like teachers don't get appreciated. And they're they they're like don't. they're I would say they're a, a foundational piece of a community. Is teaching the next generation. Yeah, I would say that the emphasis that we put on teacher appreciation week mm-hmm. is the emphasis that we should put on teachers all year round. I mean, that's like Black Te- History Month, women. Right. Yeah, you know, but that's- I feel like teachers set the foundation for who we become as people because I'll say, that's for true. example, in the last episode that I was on, I talked about. Um, the subliminal messages that I learned in high from school Ms. Hogan from Miss Hogan yeah. Toger's class. And it was one of those things that I didn't realize that her class really taught me to view life, not just media, but life from a lens of what you see in front of you has so much behind it. Mm-hmm. like yeah. so much and there was a level of emotional intelligence that i think coupled by mr hodge's class so i took two um acting oh, I, classes mr. in high yeah. school mr hodge's that was fire the theater yeah. arts yeah. class th- those are like fire. when i tell you as a high school student i unpacked more about my childhood traumas than most people unpack in their life in an acting class yeah without direct knowledge of what i was doing Mm -hmm. was insane like you would get on stage and do an improv and somewhere down the line mr hodge would stop you and he would be like what is holding you back or why did you make that decision or he would just ask you basic questions (laughs) yeah yeah where you would just be like why did i do that (laughs) <laughs> right. Thank God. I don't know yeah. if that's a blessing or a curse that I didn't dabble into that because. What? At theater? Yeah. Psh, I was on the improv team in high school. Oh, my God. One of the only regrets I have is not doing a senior year. Really? Yeah. That could be because at first, you know, when you're in high school, you're like, oh, I'm busy. I have a bunch of stuff. I was in sports. I was in a couple clubs. But in reality, I did have time. It's yeah. just, just I told time myself. For what you want. Yeah. I told myself that I didn't have time. And but they when you do improv, you go into a whole that's a whole nother community. You go into a whole different space, a whole mindset where you have to go with the flow, but in a structured manner. You have what you're going to what happened? We should do it. Hold on. I'm, I'm curious. So we should do a quick exercise. I remember doing this in one of the classes where one person started. The exercise it was in no. it was in Mr. Hodges' class where one person started the sentence by saying a word, okay. right? And then I had to think of whatever word came to mind based off of what you yeah. said. The next person would go, 
And you would learn so much about people and the way that their brains process shit without. All right. So let's go. Let's go. Go ahead. Camera. Podcast. Perspective. Ooh. Wait a minute. Ooh. Okay. Okay. See, <laughs> this is one of those moments where you got to take a pause. Why perspective? I just feel like. There's so many different approaches mm. to like podcasts or even just on life. Like you're talking about things, you're giving insight into your personal life mm. and it's you like you are giving a part of you and a part of your perspective. Yeah. Like you're making yourself vulnerable and you're letting everyone know like this you're is how letting I everyone into your life. Yeah. Like this is how I look at this. Mm. And you're opening that conversation to like, what is your perspective on the same topic? Yeah, it's so Ooh. interesting. Hey, by the way, Kayla over here is thinking about starting a podcast. So if you're listening to this and you're like, "Yo, I would definitely listen to her podcast," hit us up. All right, shameless plug. You were saying it's so interesting that you said camera. Uh huh. I said podcast. Camera plus podcast equaled her perspective. Mm -hmm. Math. Quick maths. Right? Mm -hmm. like <laughs> but that? when you think about it, <laughs> she just broke down podcast and why she said that. Yeah. But what she didn't probably process immediately was that her brain took camera, camera angles, mm -hmm. mm. camera lenses, mm. so many things that go into mm -hmm. camera. Yeah. Yeah. Coupled it with podcast, which was her immediate thought, because that was the most recent thing that she heard. Yeah. And came up with perspective. Yeah. But I like how you broke it down too. Your camera lens, your camera angle is your own perspective. Exactly. Mm. No, how you said that you're making yourself vulnerable. Yeah. And opening a discussion to be like, hey, what do you think? Because it's, like, it's, it's kind of insinuated when mm -hmm. you're listening to a podcast and people are talking through their points, they say something. And then in your mind, you think of what you think about it. In, right. you, you contemplate what would I say in that situation or how, how am I reacting to this information? So, yeah, that that's crazy. I do want to go back, though, to something that she said about perspective and going back to the shameless plug of Kayla starting her podcast, <laughs> because I feel like so taking a step back, knowing Kayla personally, how I met Kayla was very different. Oh, well, yeah. I don't know how y'all met. How did y'all meet? Oh, God. OK. I mean, it's. I think it's only one side. Yeah, there's only <laughs> one side. Like, my ex-husband introduced me to my ex-boyfriend. Oh. So, oh! And it's funny because I'm talking, like, my position now is from a Greek organization. Okay. And he was part of a Greek organization, and so was her ex-husband. So They were part of the same Greek-lettered mm -hmm. organization. Okay. So I met her ex-boyfriend way before I met her. I met her ex-boyfriend maybe almost four years before I met her. What? And were they dating at the time? No. No. So, so let me break it down. So okay. you are with a man, right? Or were with a man who was in this organization. She... So... Uh, wait, hold on. You were with, with him, and then... You met her boyfriend. No, so no, no, she no, no. was All with right. him. Okay. Wait, he no, we can... was in the organization with my ex boyfriend. Yeah. But we can even take it back. So my sophomore year of college, I met a friend who joined this organization. Uh -huh. Because my friends were part of this organization, you I met ended your up going to a party where I met my ex husband, who then, because my friends were had joined this organization at the same time as her ex-boyfriend same semester and everything i met him oh because they were going in together yeah kind yeah. of they didn't know they were going together they met but later. around the same but time point yeah, of yeah. the story is that all these people were connected mm. to then later on at another one of our friends ex-boyfriend's birthday so party. there's another friend there's with another, another friend. ex in that organization who's yes. part of the same so one, yeah. what i'm thinking is that organization is not great at producing boyfriends <laughs> <laughs> i wouldn't say that it just i would look at it as it helped me it brought to my life really great yeah. friendships well actually i can't say that because i know a couple 
I know like one or two couples that are like super strong. Oh yeah, I yeah, know. You a know lot what I mean? So I'm too. not I'm not gonna generalize the organization. Of course, there's there's, there's a lot of there's a lot of variability. Though. You're not, but too it's far just off. this coincidence is pretty funny. It is, but if it, I just I look at that um, as a blessing because I met Jennifer and then yeah. right. I was able to meet you as well mm-hmm. and our other friend. Um, so we just met at the um, the third guy. His birthday yeah, party. The third guy. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> her ex husband, my ex boyfriend, and then their this friend. Ex, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> we all met there. Um and yeah, it was yeah. it was funny. That's it's just wild. very it was interesting. Just, hey, but community. Right. right? Exactly. Right? That's the all the idea. Sa- that's all within the community. Yeah. Right. So we built this community of and actually that even goes further. So when you think about latino greek lettered organization or even black lettered organizations i don't know much about the asian ones but for example black lettered greek organizations are considered part of what they call the divine nine which are you know it's a community of black women and men gathered like the premier organizations kind of sorry repeat that the premier organizations like the top dogs well they're the only ones that exist so the divine nine are the only ones the they are the, the black organizations. Oh, they're the only ones. Yeah. The Divine Nine are the nine black letter, like black. Oh, wow. There's Greek only nine? organizations. There's, there's nine. They're the foundation. There's yeah. only nine of them? I mean. Or they were the OGs. The OGs. The OGs. Okay, okay. And then, like, and then you have. Else stemmed from them. Okay. After right. them, I should say. Nice. Okay. So then you have the NALFO organizations is a national association of latino fraternal organizations which is part of um Omega what kayla's organization of. right um which is also part of the fraternity the fraternity in which we're referring to these men that we're a part of they're also part of that general organization so you take it back to the idea of community and you have this overarching organization that connects all of these smaller communities of people divided by gender but creating one whole mission to yeah. impact the latino community as right. it relates to social lives yeah and the college development process yeah right that could translate to professional development later but we go back to community me and kayla wouldn't have met if neither of these three men were part of this community i mean granted you know if you believe in god or the universe whatever you believe in i believe in god but i think if god had a purpose for me and kayla to meet sure we would have met somewhere else but this community made it but i think you met the way you met on purpose right that's the thing because i also you know for me there is some sort of at least if it's not a deliberate, like, literal hand at work, there is something that brings us together as humans in the, within the universe, whether that's God, because I believe in God as well, or just um, the energy. Because there's, the thing is, when it comes to community, there's just unspoken, uh, I guess, goal to get to, a, to, to get to that higher purpose. Everyone has their own definition of it, but at the end of the day, nobody wants to get worse and nobody wants to stay where they're at. Mm -hmm. So it's just kind of when you get because there's a lot of different communities. There's some communities out there that are not, you know, they're not it. You know, there's there's terrorist organizations. There's. But see, that comment is subjective because if I'm a terrorist and I'm joining a terrorist organization, something about that community Mm, you're, okay. serves my purpose and is driving. Yeah. Like, think about, for example, people that look at um, terrorists, like, as far as, like, Middle Eastern culture, right, mm. and the United States. When we think of Middle Eastern terrorists in the United States, it's very problematic. Because but I also, I also think we got to specify. Right. I'm speaking about, like, Al-Qaeda, I'm okay. speaking about organizations no, that are about multiple. about the Nazis? The Nazis. The Nazis, you know? right? Okay, yeah. so the Nazis are Al-Qaeda. Regardless of what you think, for us who are knowledgeable about race, ethnicity, and the nuances, we understand terrorism is not defined by your Appearance. ethnicity, yeah, your yeah. race, your mm-hmm. cultural background. It's your actions. Right, but that community of terrorism 
and what we define as terrorism has given a bad reputation to another community that is defined by ethnicity, background, and yeah, race. Who yeah. happen to identify with that. Yeah, right. With that Be- same, yeah. Exactly, because I guarantee you, if you go back to organizations that have been founded on basic principles, and I can't give an example of one right now because I can't think of one, but basic just principles off of their religious beliefs or their emotional beliefs or whatever you want to call it. They did not start as organizations that were going to terrorize other people that they themselves would then become demonized for. Well, that's subjective. But yeah, yeah. For the most part, they started off to get to achieve a certain goal that didn't involve what they're currently doing. Exactly. That's yeah. that's a better way to put it. Yeah. And I think that's an important thing to look at even going back to the examples that we're referring to as like fraternal organizations. We look at things like the Netflix series of um was it called Burning Sands? Is that? Mm. You seen yeah. it? No, I have not. Oh. Uh, okay. I never seen it. So no, I haven't. I've heard of it. Don't think it's on Netflix anymore, but if you get a chance to watch it, you see the hazing that happens. I heard that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's really tragic because it's based on real people's experiences. Mm -hmm. It's it's not BS. It's not something they made up. We you I guarantee if you went across every single fraternal organization, no matter what the racial background is, some sort of hazing happened yeah whether it was to them or to somebody they know yeah. it, it happened i'm glad alpha didn't haze me <laughs> <laughs> i'm just saying now you know i'm not with that i would have been like nope sorry Do you know that hazing part of the definition of hazing is like if i give you a pin to wear really yeah if i give you a pin to put on that's hazing. just the and it could be like the letters what that's hazing that's hazing yeah, yeah. i would i would do that all day yeah, I actually I, I, kind I just, of I just had for to, the purposes. I just had to put, put on like a little badge of honor. Yeah, I'm trying to join this group. What's yeah. up? So not like the the you know the paddling and the yeah, so the drowning and all that stuff. Yeah, no. Yeah, like there's a lot more involved in hazing than just what yeah. is shown in that. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. But let me define hazing because uh, I think it's important for us to define hazing by way of the dictionary, yeah. so then we okay. can unpack things like wearing a pin. Mm-hmm. How that's translated to hazing, quote unquote, when by definition, hazing, as defined by Oxford languages, the imposition of strenuous, often humiliating tasks as part of a program of rigorous physical training and intimidation. Okay. Also, second, wait, wait. There, yeah. Also defined as humiliating and sometimes dangerous initiation rituals especially as imposed on college students seeking membership to a fraternity or sorority. But if we take it a step further and define haze, haze is a force to perform strenuous, humiliating, or dangerous tasks. So it's always humiliating. Or drive while on horseback. Okay, I don't think <laughs> I don't think that one has any. <laughs> that was an addition. I just I yeah, had to define that, all that the might different have been moments because like I think that might have been like a slang term or yeah. something back in the day. I don't but know. that brings me to my question: so Yeah, do sororities haze, and what is that process? Because when you when you think of hazing, you always think of the dudes. Yeah. You know, you always think of the the all the, all the movies and and the, all the news stories are always about some guy getting brutally hazed. But I've never once in my life, maybe they like I'm sure sororities do, but I've never once in my life heard of some girl in a sorority getting hazed, at least not outwardly, not publicly. So going off of her d- the definition, I feel like that in itself is very subjective as well. Um, like I said, if you're wearing a pin, so when I was in on campus, my Greek director from campus wrote the, like that book, like mm-hmm. what defined hazing oh, okay. for all organizations. She was part of that group of like that e-board of like what defined hazing, what didn't mm-hmm. like what that entailed. Um, and 
if I'm wearing a pin and that's defined as hazing to you, I don't feel like that's hazing. Yeah. I'm choosing to wear the pin. I'm choosing to um, wear this outfit. I'm choose like, it's all a it's, choice. Yeah, you can do it if you want. Exactly. And I feel like, I don't, I don't know. Like it, it's, it's very subjective to say if you've been hazed or not. Okay. Um, yeah. I have a question, but is what there if any- I, as an individual, like I have an alpha pin, mm-hmm. right? Alpha isn't part of a Greek lettered organization. Well, there's hazing and everything though. It's not just, it's not just right. Greek letters, but I have an alpha pin that I'm not required to wear. Mm-hmm. Right. But in some instances, my, chapter could say hey everybody needs to wear their pin for this particular event so that everybody knows that you're a part of the executive board for this particular mm-hmm. event which could be the same in some greek lettered organizations of like hey you need to do x y and z so that everybody knows that you're a part of this organization in some way and you as an active participant choose to do that but in the Greek world, that would be considered hazing. In the professional world, it, it's not considered hazing. Well, when, when I was in football, there was this little weird ritual that you couldn't change your socks, right? I've heard of that. So if you're if you're winning, it, it it's all subjective depending on the team, depending on the situation, who whoever's leading the team. Mm-hmm. But um, there there is sports. Uh, of course, I don't know how it works for women. But the locker room talk for dudes is super. That's when all the the masculinity comes out. You know, that's when all the the I'm the top dog alpha stuff comes out. In our situation, it really wasn't that bad. But in other schools or other teams, it could be like a legit. You know, mm-hmm. take his pants off and stick something up there. Okay, it could be on, like for on, real hold sodomization. On. Hold on, before you continue, I have to say. I don't know if, I, it, if that's a word wasn't that bad because you didn't experience it and but be also because i i know that it could be worse but to somebody else that right, could but, be but, absolutely but terrible see, I understand see, that. that's very subject because then we get into the conversation about sexuality sexual abuse and a lot of other things that go into that because for you, it wasn't that bad, yeah. but you didn't experience that. But like I said, Ima- to me... No, 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 but imagine being somebody that's never been touched... In that way, yeah. In yeah. that way, yeah. and that is your exposure to a sexual feeling as an individual. Yeah. Like, but like I said, oh, that I just want to say that that didn't happen at Central, to my knowledge, but... I I've heard stories of other football, well, just sports in general. As like I said before, hazing is was a much bigger part of that environment. I think it's interesting though that you had said that that was the experience of that one kid. Yeah, but to you, you yeah. that wasn't as bad as yeah. what you know could would what would basically be worse than that. Like you know that there's worse than yeah. what that experience was for him. Mm-hmm. Um. And I feel like that ties back to your question about, like, what is the experience for a woman? And I think it's generally, like, what is the experience for just any member who's joining a Greek organization? Uh, What do you define as, like, being too much? Like, is, you know, if you think that, like, with Burning Sands, like, they do workouts. Like, is working out hazing? Like, working out to me, I feel like that's... That'd be lit. Yeah. (laughs) I'm getting my body fit and, like, I'm going to be healthy and a healthy diet. Like, that's okay to me. But that could be totally bad for someone else. Mm -hmm. Um, And I feel like... It could be seen as fat shaming to somebody. Exactly. Yeah. So I feel like, as you said, it's very subjective to, like, what do you define as, like, hazing and what is not hazing? Because literally anything can be hazing. I can tell you, Jennifer, your hair is ugly. That's hazing. I think you can take it a step lower than that. You could tell me, Jen, your ponytail is higher than we would like it to be mm-hmm. for the purposes of what we're trying to do. Imagine imagine if somebody said that to you. Like, if somebody really... Because that seems like some very... When you're in a community that gives you that indirect, like, 
not insult, but just what they like suggestion. Okay. You know? And they're they but they're like, hey, um, it's not a big deal or anything, but if you have your ponytail like that, you can't come to this event or you can't be seen with us. Okay, so That's, so take it let's take it to the example of a professional organization such as the one that we're a part of. Kayla says to her interested member, you can't wear your hair like that because it doesn't align with the image that we as an organization want to put out there, right? Mm-hmm. We as a professional organization say to students, you can't show up to an interview like that because it's not an accurate representation yeah. of the professional profile yeah. we want associated with our organization. Yeah. Are we not saying the same thing? Yes. Yeah, but the you, thing is, me, yes. the thing is, when you think about it like that, you also have to think about who they're, where they're trying to get these students as far as our organizations. But it. I'm not saying it's different, but what I'm saying is you also have to look at why they operate in that way. You know, sometimes when you think about hazing for a Greek lettered organization or sports team, it seems totally unnecessary. Right. It's like there's no reason for you to pants that kid in order to be on the team, you know, or there's no reason for you to spank that guy with the paddle to be in the organization. But when they're telling you to wear to dress up for an interview, that's because wherever they're going to interview, most likely is going to want you to dress up or they're going to prefer you to dress up. But see, I'm not saying it's that's different. Because even, for example, paddling, mm-hmm. if you were to dive into the history of that and why that happened, I guarantee you. Okay, but what I'm you, saying is nowadays, no, 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 there's no, not but, that. But see, but see that's, that's problematic in itself because – you're assuming that because of the way that it's perceived now, it didn't serve a purpose. No, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that people that do it now don't all understand where it comes from and and that motivates them to do it. Right. Some but people that, just do it because a, they're told the to do it. But that's the same ideology behind dressing in a certain them. way for an interview. For example, I've worked both in the advertising industry and in the corporate space. Mm. In the advertising industry, I could show up with jeans and a t-shirt. And still get the job. Okay. As a creative, you could show up like that as long as your work is done. For the average job, you can just show up in jeans and a t-shirt. Actually, and 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 this is where I beg to differ with you on the way that you dress. It's the way that you represent yourself. But we know that because we're in the professional space. I'm saying that when you're catering, when you're trying to teach somebody who's not familiar with the professional corporate world because we work mostly corporate we like you wouldn't tell them to dress nicely but nicely is subjective but nicely right now is suit and tie not necessarily i'm saying yes for professional nice it's something with a collar or something with a tie or something with a jacket business cash jen yeah that's that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that. No, that is I'm saying nice. your statement is subjective. If you told somebody dress nicely, that's no, subjective. But to it's, the- I'm saying that, of yes, there's subjectivity. But what I'm saying is when you're generally just picking a group of kids, college students, we're speaking to our organization specifically now, when you're getting a group of them together and you're trying to show them how to transfer into the professional world, you wouldn't suggest that for the most part, they should wear something business casual. But see, you would teach them what business casual means to you. But this no, not no, to no, me. Not because to you. this is, for example, yeah. Daddy's generation, our father's generation. There were business casual did not exist. Uh huh. Because they used to wear a tie to go to the grocery store. Yeah. So that's what I mean. The purpose behind why you tell people to do certain things. But back then, you didn't have to tell somebody to dress for an interview like that because that was just the way they did it. That's my point. That's just the way they dressed. Yes, but they dress like that for a certain reason, especially as minorities. So when you take things to consideration, like you're talking about paddling and things like that in Greek-lettered organizations... Those things were started because they served a purpose. But that's to not what I'm speaking le- a lesson, to. which now we look at as hazy. But that's not what I'm speaking Can to. I do, do, yeah, yes. yeah, please. So, um, a little bit about what you were saying, and right now what you said, Jen. Um, 
that back in the days, like you had to go to the grocery store with a suit and tie or like a, a tie because you were a minority. You had to show face that like you looked a certain way and you mm. pre- represented yourself a certain way. Um, I feel like not that I'm shaming Alpha, um, but I feel like that's what Greek organizations do as well. They tell you or suggest not even tell, but suggest. I recommend you dress this way because I know from my experience, this is going to get you to the position you are looking to get to. So it, there doesn't just because you're joining a Greek organization doesn't mean you have to be hazed. Yeah. What I feel like the organizations are doing in itself is just giving you that platform, which I think is the most important part is that they're giving you the platform and that segue to get to the professional world that you are looking for. And honestly, I don't agree with business casual. It's very confusing to me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You never I, know. Exactly. Yeah. You could be too casual or too business and it's like this. It's, too, it's, it's too hazy. Yeah. So it's recommended you dress professional because mm. why? You're giving your best. You're putting your best self together to yeah. the real world every single day. Yeah. It's funny how you said hazy. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say something about it, yeah. but I was like, I'm gonna just let her keep going. But no, no, you're yeah, I understand what you're saying. But no, it was just a nice connection. Yeah, because yeah, it's just I just feel like, unfortunately, a lot of the times you look at Greek organizations and you think of the bad stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, like it's yeah. it's tied to you literally think of Greek organizations and you think of hazing. Like that's not what we are. Mm-hmm. We are a platform open to minorities and, you know, yeah. the majority, <laughs> you know, because it's just like they're giving you the opportunity that you never thought you had. Yeah. And I feel like coming from that same group and that same organization, I see I've witnessed firsthand how how much you could benefit from it. Mm. So it's like I'm I'm on the opposite spectrum of y'all in the sense of like the title of the organization we've joined. So it's like I have to fight my own battle with what Greek organizations are. Yeah, but I you feel have like, you have a stigma to fight against. Yeah. Yeah. But I feel like it's just there's what the opportunity Alpha has given you is the same that I've gotten. Yeah. And the many that have joined Greek organizations mm-hmm. have gotten as well. It's just yeah. honestly what you utilize out of the resources that you have. Like, yeah. So would you say, because, for example, I've heard of student alpha chapters being very exclusive to a certain type of personality in order to get on the executive board. That's hazy. Yeah. I'm, but the thing is, alpha is also not new, but it's growing. It's becoming more, um, if we were talking business wise, it's becoming a public publicly traded stock right so now it's becoming more available because i have no i had no idea what alpha was before me you neither. told me about it and a lot of people still don't really know what alpha is even but, if it's at their school but what i'm saying is now that it's growing it's becoming they're getting chapters all over the country they're they're getting their organizations are becoming bigger it's going to become that greek lettered type of size where people go to a school and they're like hey i'm gonna join alpha because this that and the third but see that's how so greek lettered organizations have a fame as a collective of yeah. being we have greek letters to represent the name of our organization uh-huh. right but they're not new no they're they're they've been there for a minute but yeah. neither neither are organizations like alpha because there's doesn't matter. aarp and there's other organizations that are membership based organizations that serve to advance your professional career in some kind yeah, of but way alpha itself is newer Right, but Latino organizations have been around for but about the same time but, as Alpha. But they don't. But it's all, not the same. That, yeah. Right. They don't. They all, serve different. But my point was, they serve different communities. Mm-hmm. But they okay. still. Yeah. But they still have a certain stigma. So where I was going with this was the stereotype behind the general community translates to the stigma behind the individual community. So Alpha, being a professional organization in spaces that are membership based just similar to any other, you know, Greek lettered organization or other organization that's membership based has a perspective and has a stereotype 
of being more socially accepted because they serve a certain purpose that is foundationally based in your career. However, Greek lettered organizations that started with the same similar mission of impacting a certain community because of the fame that they've gotten being associated to just that portion of their name that's Greek lettered has given them a fame that surpasses their mission in the public eye and has made them and because they serve more of a social aspect yeah. this is all in my opinion it's given them an overshadowing perspective where people look at them as something of a negative or like have a negative connotation to them yeah but in all reality if you were to take the communities and looked at them as communities similar to what you just said they give you the same thing yeah yeah you're just not wearing the greek letters on your chest yeah yeah and i gotta i do have to give a shout out to lul because the the from that fraternity the the dudes that i know professionally well at least from their their what they do um as career wise and where they how they treat the people around them like publicly mm-hmm. because i obviously i can only go off i don't know their their private lives but well, that organization sorry, just to interrupt just so that everyone knows that's lambda oops not lambda yeah yeah sorry yeah <laughs> that it's the only fraternity that i'm really personally familiar with but the 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 men that they produce out of there are very um because they're Latinos, you know, they're for the, all the dudes that I know and they're Latino. They 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 give that um, corporate education or that that space for them to learn how to get into the professional world. You know, it's not just a bunch of, you know, Dominican, Cuban, Puerto Rican, El Salvadorian, Mexican guys getting together and partying. Or it's not just a bunch of them getting together and being together because they're Hispanic or Latino. Like, it's them getting together in order to learn how to be better members of society. Mm-hmm. What, whether what they do personally, I, I can't really speak to privately because every person is different. But there are, there are I just want to identify that there are Greek organizations out there for the most part. And most of them do have that better side. But as people, we are, we're always attracted to the negatives. You know, we're always yeah. attracted to, you know, the hazing and what they do or the news stories or the partying and what mm-hmm. they show us in movies. But these Greek, these Greek organizations do have higher purposes. They do have yeah. a reason to exist. Right. But it goes. And I think if we dive deep into that, we get to the point of, community and giving a community to those that don't have a community because i guarantee yeah. you if mm-hmm. you went back to the founders of organizations and i think um kayla is specifically such an interesting organization because while they're part of a latino coalition they serve so many different ethnicities like most of my close friends mm-hmm. um are part of two organizations yours being one of them and understanding how they differ Mm -hmm. and the people that they attract is very important because community is subject to the people in it right but the people in it build the impact right and i think understanding how they work together is what shifts that nuance of are we going to focus on the negative? Yeah. For example, organizations such as Greek Letter that are social um, focused and organizations such as Alpha that are predominantly and almost entirely professionally focused. Yeah, but that, you know, that that is a whole another thing to unpack because um, historically, uh, I'm talking back to when we were living as nomads and blah, blah, blah. Humans had to be able to gather. De- <laughs> what? I would have been a gatherer. Gatherer? Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> but um so going back to that time period, you had to be focused on the negatives, you know? You had to know 
as a gatherer, ma'am, <laughs> you had to know what plants were going to kill you, you know, what yeah. what grains were going to kill you, what water you could drink. And as a hunter, you had to know what animals you could handle, what animals were, what predators were after you, you know, with the, with, with, with that lifestyle. And this is, you know, science based. I'm not just making this up with that lifestyle. Humans are naturally wired to be looking for the negative in something because of survival. You know, we're, we're looking for the thing that we have to run away from. We're looking for the thing that's going to be our downfall. So now that we're in a world um, somewhat peaceful, compared to then, it's peaceful. Like, people from back then would be like, oh, y'all are living the life. Mm -hmm. um, we have to start making that shift into identifying the positives, identifying what we have to build on, identifying what we can just accept as good, you know? Yeah. So it's, you know, that's a whole a whole thing to unpack, though. But we're, you know, we're getting we're getting to that time. So the, any any final remarks that y'all want to make? I kind of want to know if Kayla would be a hunter or a gatherer. I feel like she would be a gatherer. Yeah, I think I would be a gatherer. Yeah. Why? I am a softie at heart, so I can't go out and actively kill animals. Yeah. But I can make sure we get all the fruits, <laughs> all the herbs, yeah. all, the, all of that, and we'll be set. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. What about you? Me? Mm-hmm. Um, dang. I don't even know if I would be either for real. Really? I might be I might be the organizer. Was that was that like <laughs> the nah. chief of would you that be the navigator? Yeah. Maybe Had to pick. Maybe a navigator or maybe the Bro, it's maybe hunter the supply or guy manager. Guy. You're either supply you either supply <laughs> you can oversee me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, just because just because um like Kayla, I don't know if I could find myself going out and killing animals but that's also because we live in a society where that's not necessary right so if that, if that were necessary maybe i would be like yeah whatever you know this is part of life but um i couldn't be a gatherer because i feel like i would be really annoyed yeah you know i, I it would be just such a tedious thing mm -hmm. i would want i would i would i wouldn't do the best job that i could so i think if there was a position where i had to kind of allocate the necessary food supply well where it was like this man just brought in a saber-toothed tiger that he killed you know i'm like okay we're gonna use this for that we're gonna use this for this we're gonna store this for like you know a couple a couple maybe a day or two mm -hmm. just so that we have something for tomorrow just in case he can't bring nothing back and then kayla brings in the the blueberries and she brings in a couple strawberries maybe a coconut or two maybe some herbs i'm like okay we don't really need all of it right now but for this, you know, so I I don't know if that made sense, but I feel like if there was a I would just like to point out that you can't get strawberries and coconut from the same place. You can't but get blueberries and coconuts from the same <laughs> place. Okay, <laughs> anyway. But, and, but isn't yes. it like, I just would like to say that this is a prime example of like, we're utilizing our members to benefit our community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it's how it true. is. You know, everybody mm -hmm. serves, everybody, you know, for everyone listening out there, you serve a purpose in your community, all right? If you don't know what it is, all you got to do, do some experimenting, do some talk to the people around you, and figure out how you can better serve your community. I also think you need to have more confidence in yourself and your mm -hmm. ability because Ooh. a lot of times we're serving our communities, we're doing the good work, we're, you know putting our skills and our strengths at work but we don't give ourselves the credit to mm -hmm. see we don't give ourselves the impact that we're th making i don't think we give ourselves the how should I, the appropriate credit because there's some people that give themselves credit for things that they yeah. should be doing anyways or things that they really didn't do but i also think on the other side there's those people that you know, could count their blessings a little more often, and they should, because mm -hmm. it helps. It helps you get up, and you know, get up in the morning and keep doing yeah. what you're doing. And to touch base on that, I feel like if you are questioning it, I think it's really important to reach out to those people. Like, hey, you know, am I doing the best that I can? Do you have Ooh. any insight? Can you yes. give me guidance? Yes. Because that's what we're all here for. Mm -hmm. I may know something that you don't that might really benefit you yeah and you as well 
and you won't know that until you ask ask yeah Mm -hmm. yeah ask and you shall receive Mm -hmm. to that point i think it's very important to always note that no matter where you are in your journey of life no matter where you sit on your journey of life you are always a student of life okay well, Nobody's ever book? a teacher of life. <laughs> <laughs> We're all students. We're all learning. We are. Yeah, yeah, that, that you is could true, be yes. the dictator or the president of the world. I guarantee you, you're going to wake up one morning and realize there is something that you don't know. Yeah. There's um there's a Greek philosopher. I forget who it was, honestly, but there he said that so, it, it was foolish to think that you know everything. The why is something mm-hmm. like the wise man knows he knows nothing, right? Yes. Is there's a whole quote yeah. to that. And somebody that I looked up to as a child, I'm not even going to lie, was Solomon in the Bible. Because this man God presented to him that he could have whatever he asked for basically. He was like, "Hey, listen. Manifest. You know, I want he God said, "I want to bless you." You know? What do you want? And he didn't say, I want to be rich or famous. He didn't say, I want to be the most powerful ruler. I want to be the greatest king. No, he was like, just make me wise enough to lead your people. Give me the wisdom I need to lead your community. And God was like, bet. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to make you the wisest I, man on the yeah, planet. Bet. When he- and, I'm, and then he was like, uh, the thing is also, when you ask for something that is actually, I guess, um, beneficial to the people around you you get more than what you ask for because you get what you you know you get what you give out it's Mm -hmm. that whole karma thing god was like yo i'm gonna give you that wisdom but i'm also gonna give you the riches and the power that you need in order to make that happen you know it was like an added bonus but at the same time you realize that yes he asked for wisdom but now he needs something to put that in action and so that's that whole thing is something that really molded how I operate. I think it's important to understand wisdom from the perspective of the value that it adds to not just your life, but everybody else's life. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we want to be wise to get ourselves out of a situation yeah, or to elevate ourselves, not realizing that the wisdom that you have maybe for someone else yeah exactly actually yeah. we were just talking about this mm-hmm. we were we were we were just talking about it uh, kayla any last remarks for thank you, you for on? having me i really appreciate it thank you thank you jennifer for being on definitely look forward to uh, making some some more content with y'all yeah so thank you you know this has been another episode of the sandbar uh, let me know, you know, for people out there, what is your community? You know, what do you think a community is? What do you what do you feel like your impact on your community is? Or what do you want to how do you want to make an impact in your community? Let us know. You know, I'm going to put Kayla's information. I'm going to put Jennifer's information. And I hope M- you had a good time. Y'all check out Kayla's podcast when it drops because yeah. we're oh, manifesting for sure. that. For sure. When you when you get your podcast out there, I'm going to have you back on here and we're going to talk about that. We don't, awesome. We're manifesting that because yeah. we believe yeah. in Kayla's ability to Thank flourish you. and grow because she's just like, for those that don't know Kayla personally, some of y'all that are listening to this may, but if you don't know Kayla personally, she's okay. <laughs> like, yeah. she, honestly, if I had to pick my friends in ratings, she would be top five. I'm not going to list them all because I have a lot of amazing friends, but like, damn definitely one of the most amazing people that i've met in life so y'all need to check out her podcast when it pops she's just an amazing human being so yeah. Yeah. i love you right. deuce bum 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 bum